a news hour tonight. Gunmen defy curfew, kill 18 in fresh Benue attack. Couple arrested for allegedly torturing 13-year-old ward in Taraba State. Hadana drivers commend federal government over CNG initiatives, saying move will slash fares. Another foreign thing, at least 11 people killed, dozens missing in China Bridge collapse. Hello and welcome to Trust TV's News Hour. I am Chiamaka Mwafo. Now the news. Gunmen suspected to be bandits on Friday night invaded the Bacha community in Bacha local government council world rather of Katsina Ala local government area of Benue state and killed 18 people. Now sources from the local government said the bandits would defy the curfew imposed by the state government invaded the community at about 11 p.m. on Friday and killed the villagers. Benue state governor Hyacinth Elia had imposed a curfew from 6 p.m. to 6 a.m. in Sankara Axis following a violent protest that rocked Ukum local government area two weeks ago. The Sankara Axis comprises Katsina Ala, Okum, and Logo, which has remained a flashpoint of criminality in this state. The source father said the bandits assembled the people, pretending to be addressing them before opening fire on some of them. 18 bodies were reportedly recovered on Saturday morning by the military. Confirming the incident, the chairman of Katsina Ala local government era, Justin Shaku, said the bandits had concluded their operations before the military got to the village. Over in Borneo State, police anti-bomb squad on Friday night deactivated an improved, improvised explosive device planted near a primary health care center in the Medugui metropolis. Now, the IED was discovered by residents around Malakachala General Hospital at the federal low cost along Baga Road around midnight. According to an eyewitness, the ID did not explode as it was discovered on time. The police anti-bomb squad was alerted and they deactivated the device without any casualty. The source of the bomb is yet to be established. Police at the state confirmed the incident about a week ago. An IED was discovered planted at Zajeri Primary School, also at Bagarud. This is coming a month after multiple explosions killed 36 people in Goza town and a day after the military raised alarm on the increased use of IEDs by Boko Haram terrorists to cause havoc. The Nigerian army has called on Nigerians to support security agencies with relevant intelligence that will enhance its counterinsurgency operations in the Northeast. The General Officer Commanded 7th Division Operation Hadinkai, Abubakar Kaharuna, stated this at a one-day counter-improvised explosive device awareness seminar in Medugri's Maymalari cantonment. General Haruna said the seminar aims to reawaken the security consciousness of affected communities and address threats posed by IEDs, which remains the primary weapon used by terrorists. He stressed that it will deny the insurgents freedom of action on soft targets. The awareness campaign also aims to enhance the security landscape in the Northeast and build trust in communities against the region's adversaries. The counter improvised explosive device awareness seminar is designed to place significant emphasis on addressing the threats posed by improvised explosive devices, which remain a primary weapon employed by the insurgents. Today's seminar is designed, is designed to equip you with the necessary knowledge essential for effective identification of improvised explosive devices, making materials, and the need to confiscate as well as prevent their proliferation to terrorist enclaves.
and the chief of staff of army staff rather lieutenant general tari lagbaja has rewarded three soldiers of operation heading kai for their exceptional efforts against insurgents and adversaries at the war front the army chief while announcing the award at a special dinner said the army will continue to focus on restoring peace in the northeast region for economic activities to resume petrus kuruzzi tells us more it is a special dinner to celebrate the successes recorded at the front lines on completion of the dry season operations in enclaves of terrorists and others. The night was also dedicated to fallen heroes with a minute of silence observed in honor of the departed who paid the supreme price. The dinner afforded troops and sideline soldiers to chat and share experiences from the operation. The chief of army staff, represented by the theater commander of Operation Hadenkai, rewarded three soldiers with houses for their heroics during the operations. The theater commander of Operation Hadinkai, Major General Waidi Shaibu, appreciated troops for their conduct and professionalism during operations. He added that it will restore peace for socio-economic activities to thrive in the Northeast. It is also said that sin is believing. Sin is believing. And the messages we have told you, the promises we have made to you, you can see them being fulfilled gradually. Is that not so? Yes, yes sir. sir. So to this end, I want to thank you all for your patience, your commitment to duty, and the professionalism that you have displayed and encourage you to keep it up. And together we will strive to ensure we achieve our mandate of restoring peace it is expected that the rewards for the outstanding soldiers will boost the morale of others at the battle front. Betro Skuruti, Trust TV News, Meduguri. Still staying with security in the northeast over in Taraba State. Gunmen suspected to be bandits have ambushed and killed the chief of Chanchangi, Tanimu, Kumbia and his son Yusuf Tanimu. The incident happened on Friday evening when the traditional ruler and his son were returning from a funeral service in Takum. A press statement issued by the special advisor to the governor on media and digital communication, Emmanuel Bellu, said Governor Abu Kefes received with deep sadness the news of the death of the traditional ruler and his son. The governor described as tragic how the late revered monarch was hacked to death. According to the statement, the governor has since ordered the security agents to immediately investigate the circumstances and go after the perpetrators of the heinous crime, insisting everyone involved must be brought to justice as soon as possible. The governor, while suing for calm from Tekum residents, said he would leave no stone unturned to fetch out the criminals and bring them to justice in the shortest time possible. Kefas also condoled to the people of Chachangi and Takum. He stressed the need for all to remain calm and work towards peaceful coexistence. He also said he would continue to work hard with partners to make the state safe for everyone. This is the third time this year that a traditional ruler will be killed by suspected bandits. Still in Taraba State, the police have confirmed the arrest of a woman and her brother for allegedly throwing a 13-year-old girl, Bridget Samuel, into boiling water. Bridget, according to Trust TV's news group, who visited her at the Federal Medical Center, Jalingo, where she's receiving treatment for burns, reports that she was alleged to have stolen 5,000 naira. Here's the report. Bridget Samuel, a 13-year-old girl, left her father's house in Malam Lakwadi village of Yoro local government to stay with her uncle who had agreed to enroll her in school while she lived with him at a nearby village. One month into Bridget's stay, her uncle's wife sent her on an errand to a neighbor who later claimed she stole 5,000 from the neighbor's house. 
The angry neighbor and her brother, despite Bridget's insistence on being innocent, reportedly grabbed her, tied her hands, and put them in boiling water. One of my uncles picked me from my father's village to his village and promised to enroll me in school. One day, his wife sent me to a neighbor's house and when I got there, I met a boy lying in front of the house. He told us that there was nobody in the house and we turned back. Later in the evening, the woman came to our house saying that I stole her money. I told her I did not but she insisted I did. So she grabbed me, tied my two hands and put them into boiling water that she mixed with sand and pepper. Bridget's father later reported the case to the police after his brother who took Bridget in failed to show up to explain what transpired. One of my wife's brother came to my house one month ago when I was not around and asked my wife to release our daughter to go live with him. I refused from the beginning, but my wife insisted. So I agreed on the ground that she was going to enroll in school. Since she was stuck in, I did not hear anything until one of my brothers met her on her way to our place and took her to Fufule area of Yoro, where he took her to some of our relatives there. The Taraba State Police Commissioner David Iloyalomun confirmed the incident, adding that the accused are in custody. Domestic violence is a crime, and we should not continue to use our strength and uh, subjugate and subdue others and terrorize others, particularly those who look up to us and depend on us for survival. A 13-year-old girl under the custody of the guardian is being treated this way. I'll urge you to go to the hospital because she is still undergoing treatment to go and interview her in the hospital because we are not sure whether those hands will still be useful uh, for her in her lifetime any longer. But the doctors are actually working around the clock to see that she is restored to normalcy. When Trust TV visited the hospital, Bridget was seen to be recovering from her burns. We move down to the southwest. Gunmen on Friday night killed two persons and kidnapped five travelers along the E4 or more expressway in was the local government area of Ondo State. It was guarded that the kidnappers, numbering about 15 and armed with AK-47 rifles, accosted the Siena bus conveying the travelers at about 11 p.m. at Umialafa village in Ifo, or the local government area, and led the victims into the forest. While the driver and a female passenger who sat on the front of the vehicle were shot dead, two other passengers were said to have escaped. An eyewitness narrated that the vehicle was coming from Anambra State with passengers heading towards Akure when the bandit struck. It was guarded that the corpses of the deceased had been deposited at the morgue of a hospital in Ifo, the headquarters of the local government. The Ondo State Police Public Relations Officer Fumilayo Dulami confirmed the incident but said the command could not ascertain the exact number of escaped victims. Now, victims of St. Academy School building collapse in just the Plateau State capital, which claimed over 22 lives and 132 sustaining varied degrees of injuries, have received a promise of intervention from President Bola Tinubu's son, Sheyi Tinubu. Sheyi who made the promise through a youth delegation who visited the victims on his behalf, promised to return the survivors to school when they are discharged from the various hospitals they were admitted. Now, Dixon Adama tells us more. The leader of the delegation who represented the president's son is also the national chairman, youth wing of the Christian Association of Nigeria, Beliso Chikwenwere. He said they came to assess and ascertain the level of devastation caused by the tragic building collapse, adding that the VC was also to convey the condolences as well as concern of Shei over the unfortunate incident. And by the special grace of God, we will do everything humanly possible to make sure that um, the ones who are injured are well taken care of and they will go back to school. And that is the major uh, reason why I am here, why I left Abuja 
down to uh, just Plateau State to make sure that all these students are well taken care of. And you know vividly well that um, this is about lives, it's about students, it's about youth, it's about our future, the future of our children, the future of our country. And that is why we are here, to make sure that everybody is okay. Ewere urged builders to always adhere to specified building standards in order to prevent a recurrence of such tragic incidents in the future. He called on the Council of Regulation of Engineering in Nigeria and other relevant regulatory bodies to enforce strict building construction measures and sanction airing building owners. In his remarks, the Plateau State Chairman of Yowikan, Pan Mark Mark Leary, said they are excited that help is coming from the victims who currently need it desperately. He also expressed hope that Governor Caleb Mufwang, as listening governor, fulfill his commitment to the victims as promised during his visit to the school. We have also listened to the hostel management. I think from the last administration of uh, uh, Senator Lalong, Marco Lalong, that some bills from the Yerwanzangam attacks are still being yet paid. I think the we are there we made commitments to the management that we would see how we would follow up. The government of the day, present Governor Manasse Kaneb Mufwa, is a very supportive government and I'm sure he will not lose sight to ensure that the debt of the past government is settled even by himself. While receiving the delegation, the manager of Ola Hospital, Reverend Sir Juvi Taigo, appreciates Sheyi Tenebu for the show of love and concern to the affected school children. She appealed for quick assistance and redeeming of the pledge in order to help settle the bills. There's the news hour on Trust TV. Up ahead. Kaduna drivers commend federal government over CNG initiative say move will slash fares. This story more when we return. Please do stay with us. Welcome back. Thanks for staying with us. A recap of our top stories. We told you that gunmen defy curfew, kill 18 in fresh Benue attack. We also informed you that couple arrested for allegedly torturing 13-year-old ward in Taraba State. Now, the Oil State Police Command has arrested 41 suspects for various crimes, including ritual killing, kidnapping, armed robbery, and murder. The suspects were paraded at the police command in Eleyele, Ibadan, the state capital. Here's the report. These 41 suspects will be prosecuted for allegedly committing several offenses and upon conviction may be sentenced to imprisonment with additional penalties as prescribed by law. According to the Oyo State Commissioner of Police, some of the suspects include kidnapped Kimpins and Kato Roslas who were arrested in their idol through intelligence gathering. In a bid to sustain the present temple of relative tranquility, Strategic meetings have been held with key security stakeholders of the command, inclusive of all civil liberties organizations, market forces, student groups, tribal religious institutions, and the Police Community Relations Committee about the best cause for the actualization of this of a safer and more peaceful for your students. This 35-year-old man confessed to killing an online cow skin vendor after luring her to an uncompleted building under the pretext of connecting her with pork buyers. So we could not see that day again. So the next day we saw, so I asked her name. So she told me everything about her. So she told me that she used to sell Pomo. So, and okay, I saw the, I saw her status on WhatsApp. So, and I show my people around that um, someone is selling Pomo. So, the nurse said that she should she bring the pomo around. So the so she brought the pomo so from there. For these suspects, they will be charged for gun running and being in possession of over one thousand pieces of live AK forty seven rifle ammunition. Uh, the issue is that for me, my business is that I sell papers, cast papers. So so sometimes like uh, the time I was coming from uh, Sharky, so I was giving a message 
to deliver it to Mr. Ashake. So uh, uh, the ammunition. So initially, I didn't even know that that was what is in the boots. So even if I would have known, I would have accepted it in the first place. Because I didn't know. It was when I got to Ibadan. So they stopped me and they searched. They opened my boots and they saw it at the back of my boots. I was even shocked when I saw it. Other items recovered include several vehicles, motorcycles, cash worth 16 million naira, pistols, and jackknife, among others. And to political matters, reinstated Deputy Governor of Edo State, Philip Shoibu, alongside the People's Democratic Party PDP Legacy Coalition members in his company, have defected to the All Progressives Congress, APC. He defected during the inauguration of the National Working Committee of the Edo APC Governorship Election Meeting held on Saturday. The meeting had in attendance the former governor of Kano State and national chairman of the APC, Abdullah Iganduje, including the governors of Ondo State, Loki Aida Tiwa, and Cross Rivers, Basi Otu. The Edo State APC State Chairman, Jared Tenebe, and the governorship candidate, Senator Monde Okwebolo, and Adams Ushomale were also at the meeting. On behalf of all of us in Legacy Coalition, we have come to join APC AO. And I want to assure our national chairman and all the members of APC that we have come to add value. And it is time to take our state back. It is time to take our state. It is time to take our state back. And by the grace of God, sir, action we speak louder than voice. We are ready to move. Are we not ready to move? Are we not Still staying with politics over in a Boeing state, the local government elections on Saturday witnessed low turnout of voters as only a handful of voters were at different polling units to elect new chairmen and councillors. Trust Division at Anawai, who visited some polling units, reports that voters intermittently strolled to polling booths to cast their votes with no queues at the polling units as a result of the low turnout. Here's this report. At Abakiliki, is our South, Afikbo, and on the Chal local government areas where Trust TV crew monitored the exercise, there was poor turnout of voters. In an interview with Trust TV, some stakeholders attributed the low turnout of voters to non participation of some political parties in the election. However, others expressed confidence in the Commission's capacity to conduct the poll, adding that the electoral body has exhibited fairness in the election. Governing the nation to elect the councillors, the council chairman. And uh, well, we are restricted in movement, I have not gone out of my own polling But this is a collection center, and I can only speak for the world where I come from. Nations have been very peaceful. Uh, uh, other people may be talking of apathy, but here we don't have apathy. People come that they will vote for candidates of their choice. I see it as a peaceful turnout well, because there's no any problem. The turnout is okay. No matter how wing stop, but later everything is going normal. It's our chairmanship election and our people turn down greatly because we are happy. So you can see them around. Everywhere is flooded, uh, crowded. People came out. Uh, security, we have a lot of security today. The police people are here, civil defense. They are all around here to protect the people. The nation uh, went down free and fair. And uh, this is the first time uh, an Abomege is going to be a uh, executive chairman of the uh, local government since the creation of a uh, state. This is the first time. And uh, our people are very happy. People came out, got their materials were supplied in all parts of the cooling units. While the election was ongoing, it was a good time for some people to reflect on the recent Supreme Court verdict, granting financial autonomy 
to local governments as well as calls for the establishment of a national commission to conduct local government elections. That autonomy does not mean tearing apart in any way. Nothing is wrong that the state government and the local government can come under one umbrella and pick up a project. Remember that there are constitutional rules left for local government. There are constitutional rules left for state government. Are you telling me that you will leave security entirely to the hands of the uh, local government? Can they cope? You won't. So in that case, there must be a joint issue to tackle it. However, the election was generally peaceful, with many polling units recording zero to low disturbance, while voters were absent in some polling units as at 11 a.m. Jonathan Awanya, Trust TV News, Abakiliki. The national president of the Association of Local Governments of Nigeria, Algon Aminu Meifata, has assured Nigerians that local government administrators will prioritize primary health care and basic education. He made this promise at the opening of the 48th National Executive Council NEC meeting of Algon in Lafia, Nasarawa State. This meeting marks the first gathering of the association since the Supreme Court affirmed the autonomy of local government councils in the country. Mefata emphasized that local government administrators are committed to delivering on their statutory responsibilities, particularly in primary health care and basic education. He acknowledged that the task wouldn't be easy, but expressed confidence in the abilities of grassroots leaders to provide democratic dividends to local communities. The Algon National President expressed his gratitude for the confidence reposed in local government councils by the presidency, state governors, and the Supreme Court. Reaction The recent verdict of the Supreme Court granting financial autonomy to local governments in Nigeria. According to some residents of Bauchi State, the local government is the only hope for the common man in terms of growth and development, hence the need for autonomy that guarantees sustainable growth at the rural level. Adamu Imam tells us more. The landmark judgment has continued to generate reactions across the length and breadth of Nigeria following its implication on political landscape. No one has been the most closest to the common man. We look forward to having better services, better health services, better security network, and development projects that we can collect the immediate need of the people that the cost. So it's a step in the right direction. We look forward to having better representation, better services, better security. State electoral commissions are on board. This issue of financial autonomy is just, uh, it will be, it will just be in the book. It will not hold any water. But when federal government hear the people's agitation to, 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 to give the National Independent Electoral Commission the mandate to be conducting local government elections, that is where the local government will be autonomous. We must look the other way that is administrative autonomy of the local governments when you granted a uh, financial autonomy to the government and they don't have administrative autonomy there is an issue there and the mumini Chiroma is a bochi based legal practitioner he says what is left for the state governors to accept the verdict and allow local governments to function optimally demand that the government should look forward on the, the issue of disbursement and the total control of the money given to the local authorities. But uh, as far as legal is concerned, the judgment of the Supreme Court is absolute. Nigeria being a rule of law country, in any state where rule of law is in existence, you cannot take these uh, three principles, fundamental human rights, separation of power, and that the uh, legislature. So this issue of separation of power was recognized in our constitution and Nigeria is a country that observes rule of law. So the governors cannot do any other thing rather than to accept fate and allow the judgment of the court. Meanwhile, as a follow-up to the verdict, a senator from Niger State, Sani Musa, 
has presented a bill that will allow local government elections to be conducted by an independent body and not the state governments as it is currently done. Adam Imam, Trust TV News, Pauchi. The chairman of the Special Task Force Committee on Environmental Protection, Public Safety and Prohibition of Deforestation, retired General Jeremiah Aliu Faranta, has set fire on an illegal mining camp in Akwana village of Ukari local government area of the state. According to him, the camp has been operating illegally despite several warnings. It would be recalled that Governor Abu Kefas had issued an executive order banning all forms of mining activities in Taraba State. The tax force also arrested three suspected miners at the camp. Faranza said the suspects will be arraigned before the Special Mobile Court on Environmental Protection, Public Safety and Prohibition of Deforestation for Prosecution. WhatsApp says its parent body, Meta, will be appealing the $220 million fine imposed by the Federal Competition and Consumer Protection Commission, FCCPC, regarding its violation of Nigeria's data privacy laws. WhatsApp said this in a statement made available to newsmen on Saturday in Lagos. The reaction follows a statement released by the FCCPC and signed by its acting executive chairman, Adamu Abdullahi, saying that Meta had denied Nigerian users' control over their data. The FCCPC said Meta had also shared the users' data without consent and abused its market dominance. According to the statement released to the media, the FCPC, FCCPC's final order imposed a monetary penalty of 220 million US dollars only on Meta. The penalty is in accordance with the FCCPA 2018 and the Federal Competition and Consumer Protection Administrative Penalties Regulations 2020. The FCCPC noted that it is investigation uncovered evidence of Meta engaging in practices that were abusive and invasive towards data consumers in Nigeria. Over in Kaduna State, commercial drivers say the federal government's efforts to convert vehicles into compressed natural gas will improve the transport system in the country and make fares more affordable for the citizens. The leaders of the drivers during the rally in Kaduna say making the conversion kits available and affordable to commercial drivers will encourage them to convert their vehicles within a short time. Bella Musa completes the report. The removal of subsidy by the present government on fuel led to a surge in the price of petroleum motor spirit in the country. This made the price of other goods and services to surge. The transport sector was not exempted, as fares also increased due to the adjustment in the pump price. The introduction of the compressed natural gas by the government was aimed at alleviating the sufferings of Nigerians caused by the removal of subsidy. However, Commercial drivers in Kaduna say the conversion will ease their operation. Because the initiative is to make sure that the cost of commercial vehicles come down to the barest minimum. And by if the conversion works well, automatically the price of vehicle will come down. Because from here to Abuja, you can buy a fuel worth 40000 45,000 depends on how the vehicle is. The surge in the transport fare has created a ripple effect on Nigerians, with citizens finding it difficult to make ends meet. According to the federal government, the aim of the CNG is to make transport fare affordable for all. The idea is to drive down the cost of commercial transportation. How do you do that? The, what the way we are picking now is by converting the vehicles of the of the road transport unions, if we make their running costs cheaper, the idea is for them to translate these savings onto the end user by making the uh, transportation costs cheaper. Although the federal government has commenced moves to make the conversion kits available for commercial motorists, the question many are asking is whether the conversion kits will be affordable for other Nigerians. Bella Musa. Trust TV in Skaduna. 
Economic experts in the country have blamed the rising hunger in the land on food inflation, which has significantly raised the cost of food items in the country. Speaking to Trust TV on the sidelines of the latest figures on inflation and the attendant impact on daily living, they also said the situation has been exacerbated by the fact that the citizens' income levels have not correspondingly increased, leading to a substantial drop in real income. Here's the report. According to experts, the hunger on the land will continue to rise as food inflation, which currently stands at 40.8%, continues to increase. They say this level of inflation is unprecedented and can only be addressed if the federal government identifies and tackles the factor driving food prices up. The first major issue is the issue of insecurity that is affecting the supply of food. Because most of our farmers are having challenges going to the farm, engaging in farming activities and so on and so forth. That has significantly affected food output or food supply. It is a major problem that has you know, contributed to this uh, food crisis that we are experiencing. The second major issue is the cost of transportation. Uh, moving the food products from the farms to the cities uh, is also has become extremely, very, very costly. Nigerians on the Strait of Lagos are urging the federal government to subsidize agricultural inputs for farmers and also address the issue of insecurity which is affecting the agricultural sector. If you allow food to enter, people will go and buy. If rice is selling like 30, 20,000, people will buy. Why are they selling 80, 100? They are not putting their, their, their citizens to concentration. So we are going to come to say not corresponding with what the reality on have. And then what I think they can do is to be a supervisor in every level that can monitor what they are doing. There are so many things that government can do. One of which is to subsidize the agricultural materials that the farmers are using. The cost of uh, I mean, those things that they use in planting, they are very much costly for the farmers. On the part of Nigerians, experts say citizens can only help address the situation by engaging more in food production. These, they say, will help as the government is making efforts to reduce food imports, especially rice, by focusing more on increasing domestic production, as many rice mills are operating in less than 30% capacity due to lack of resources. Those who have opportunity to plant one or two things, they should also plant because you have some of our citizens that have, you know, the wide expanse of land at their disposal. It could be large compounds, it could be, you know, those opportunities exist. For now, citizens are urging the federal government to open the borders and allow more imported food into the country to make up for the present shortage. The House of Representatives Joint Committee investigating the arbitrary increase in cement price in the country has amended documentary proof of production costs for major manufacturers in the industry to justify the price of the commodity in the market. The committee also berated the Federal Competition Consumer Protection Commission, FCCPC, for its laxity and inefficiency, which they say has significantly contributed to the high cost of the commodity in the country. Here's the report. The joint committee led by Gaza Jonathan quizzed the group managing director of Angote Cement Company, Arvin Pathak, and the managing director of Lafarge Cement, Ibrahim Aminu in Abuja. Gaza says the committee will ensure that the companies produce the total documents it requested to ascertain their day-to-day -day production for it to have a good idea of how much it actually costs to produce a bag of cement, including the cost of imported components in the production process. But undoubtedly, just as air is to the human being, so is cement to the built industry. And with a housing gap of over 16 to 20 million in Nigeria, you know that cement plays an integral and critical role 
in the economic well-being of our country. I was reading somewhere today, and the Minister of Housing said that the Nigerian people will be needing at least five trillion annually to address the housing shortages. Members also frowned at the justification of the price increase, which was hinged on the rise in foreign exchange, despite the fact that most of the companies sourced their major raw materials locally and declaring profits of over 500 billion naira in year out. You see, the fundamental problems that we are facing now in this country is as the result of unnecessary increment in prices of commodities. And these commodities, most of the raw materials that are being used to produce these items are found in this country. You don't import them. For example, like the cement. Earlier in his presentation, the group managing director of Angote Cement Company, Arvin Pathak, said there has been an increase of between 100 and 333 percent in the price of major cement impute materials like gas, agro, gypsum, imported coal, spare parts, new trucks, tires, and petrol, adding that some of the contracts are usually paid in dollars. Our average forex has gone up by three times. Our AGO prices have gone up by three times, 2.3.33. Our gypsum cost has gone by almost 3.23 times. Imported coal has gone up by 2.33 times. Spare parts, almost the same because they link to the dollar pricing. Only the bag uh, cost has not gone up because we produce our own bags. This is another investment we have done in the backward integration. So that we are not at the mercy of importers to charge at the back price. So that cost we have been able to control to 27%. Gaza, however, blamed the high price of the commodity on the inaction of the Federal Competition Consumer Protection Commission, FCCPC. Meanwhile, the Director of Operations of Lafarge Africa PLC, Chinedu Richard, explained that although Nigeria has some of the required materials, their low purity levels necessitate importation. He also cited the increase in foreign exchange rates as a significant factor contributing to the price hike. Let me start by saying here, Mr. Chairman, that the gas that we use for energy, energy is 60 to 70% of the variable cost of producing cement. Gas represents 90, 80 to 90% of that energy cost. The gas we buy today is indexed in dollars and paid in naira. Who are you buying it from? We're buying from Nigerian gas company. The Nigerian gas company contract today is reference to dollar. It's five dollars per scoff. Scoff have, is the unit of gas. You have, we uh, have evidences of the contract. Can I have that? The committee chairman, Gaza Jonathan, expressed concern over the country's existing housing deficit, emphasizing that the increase in cement prices would escalate the issue, plunging Nigeria into a deeper housing crisis. Right now, Nigeria is at its lowest ebb. Threats of protests, cries of hunger, tears of desperation and despair. As much as we may be opportune, we have a moral responsibility to equally empathize with those that are downtrodden and are the lowest part of the ladder. The committee is interested in probing the cost of production from 2020 to date that justify the current price of cement, which is now selling at over 10,000 naira in most parts of the country. In business, the Central Bank of Nigeria has directed banks and other financial institutions to transfer all dormant accounts 
on claimed balances and other financial assets to its dedicated account. The Apex Bank made this known in a circular release on Friday and signed by its acting director of financial policy and banking regulation department, John Onoja. According to CBN, all dormant accounts and unclaimed balances with banks for at least 10 years will be warehoused in a dedicated account known as the Unclaimed Balances Trust Fund Pool account. The Apex Bank added that the funds from dormant accounts, unclaimed balances, may be invested in Nigerian Treasury bills and other government securities. The CBN, however, said the new guidelines, which is a review of the guidelines issued in October of 2015, exempted dormant accounts and unclaimed balances under litigation and investigation. Certain business, the Nigerian Exchange Limited NGX has delisted the shares of Niger Insurance PLC, Resort Savings and Loans PLC and RAK Unity Petroleum PLC from its facilities effective July 18. NGX in its weekly report said the three companies were delisted on the grounds that they were operating below the listing standards of the exchange. The exchange noted that the securities of the affected companies were also no longer considered suitable for continued listing and trading in the market. On trading for the week, the Nigerian stock market recovered from its previous week's loss, leading to a profit of 488 billion naira for investors. Specifically, the NGX All Share Index on market capitalization appreciated by 0.87 and 0.86% to close the week at 100,539.40 basis points and 56.929 trillion naira respectively as against 99,671.328 basis points and 56.441 trillion naira recorded in the previous week. Similarly, all other indices finished higher with the exception of NGX Banking, NGX Insurance, NGX AFR Bank Value, NGX Consumer Goods and NGX Oil and Gas. Also, the NGX Growth and NGX Sovereign Bond depreciated by 0.05% for 0.86%, 0 0.07%, 0.20%, 0.10%, 0.43%, and 4.35% respectively, while the NGX ESM index closed flat. Meanwhile, a total turnover of 2.827 billion shares was 42.366 billion naira in 44,277 deals was shredded this week by investors on the floor of the exchange. And away from Nigeria, South African police have uncovered one of the country's largest methamphetines manufacturing operations, leading to the arrest of four suspects, including two Mexicans. The discovery was made on a farm in Groblesdel, a small town in Limpopo province, according to a police statement issued on Saturday. The lab was found to contain significant quantities of chemicals used in illicit drug production such as acetone and crystal meth with an estimated street value of 2 billion rand, an equivalent of $109.5 million. Hatle Gomagali, national spokesperson for the Hawks, an elite police unit involved in the raid, noted that the presence of Mexican nationals made the case particularly complex. As the investigation continues, the arrested suspects are scheduled to appear in court on Monday, facing charges of manufacturing, dealing and possessing illicit drugs. And it's downtime for sports with Emmanuel Fashemi. Nigerian sprint cessation favor Philly powered to victory at Holloway Pro Classic in Florida, winning both the 100 meters and 200 meters event. Ophili won the women's 100 meters in a strong fashion, edging out Candace Hill in the time of 11.07 seconds to finish first. After an impressive win in the 100 meters, Ophili returned to the track less than an hour later, winning the women's 200 meters in a time of 22.62 seconds, with Adeja Hodge in the third with a time of 22. 0.66 seconds. Favor Phillies win set a strong tone for our 2024 Olympic prospects, which starts on July 26th with the track and feed events holding from August 1st to 11th 
2024. Meanwhile, world record holder in 100 meters hurdle, Toby Amuson could only manage a second place finish in the women's 100 meters hurdles at the same event in Florida, USA. Despite a poor start, Amuson raced to a second place finish in 12.60 seconds against a 1.7 meter seconds headwind behind America's Grace Stark. Stark edged out Amuson for the win by the narrowest of margins, crossing the finish line in 12.58 seconds. U.S. champion Masai Ruse rounded out the podium, taking third place with a time of 12.66 seconds. Toby Amuson in the heat dominated the feed with a winning time of 12.49 seconds, besting Ruse's 12.51 seconds and Great Britain's St. December's 12.62 seconds. Denisha Cartwright of the Bahamas finished fourth in the final race with 12.79 seconds, while Christiana Clemens of the USA came in fifth at 12.88 seconds. This performance at the Holloway Pro Classic serves as an excellent indicator for both sprinters Favor Philly and Toby Amuson form are ready for the upcoming 2024 Paris Olympic Games. The Nigerian Army handball team Coas Shooters have been crowned champions of the 2024 National Division 1 Handball League in men's category. Coas Shooters beat Oshun United 21 to 16 goals in the final of the men's category of the game played at the Indoor Sports Hall of Samuel Ogbumdia Stadium in Benin City to gain promotion back to the elite division. The team coordinator, Brigadier General Belo, revealed that it took the special intervention of the Chief of Army of Staff, Lieutenant General Taurid Lagbaja, through timely logistics for the team to get the desired results. Belo said anything short of the trophy would have not been accepted due to the support and commitment of the Nigerian Army to the team. He stated that the Army has demonstrated the ability to assess sporting activities due to its proper planning and execution of programs. The team was relegated three years ago when they failed to impress in the top flight league. And that is sports. I am Emmanuel Fashini. And with that, we've come to the end of News Hour tonight on Trust Television. For more of our news, programs and documentaries, please do also follow us on our social media platforms and on our YouTube live stream. I am Chiamaka Mwafo. Thank you for joining us tonight. From the Daily Trust News Centre, this is the News Hour.